Hey guys, how's it going? On today's video, we're gonna be unboxing and installing this electric power steering conversion kit from Easy Power Steering on my E30. They also have them available for 2002 and E21s. You can go check out my website down below, rageofparts.com, if you are interested in purchasing one of these kits. I've already opened the box. You'll have the main box and you'll have a smaller box which will hold most of that stuff. I already took it out. So you have a few pieces of literature with the installation manual. You have the wiring for your switch for how much assist you want. We have another power cable. And then we have the column itself. This will replace the column that's in the car. You will still need a few pieces from the other column, which I'll show you shortly. But here is the assembly. You have your motor right there, as well as the control box. This is going on my uh, 87 IS, which is a US car, so it's left-hand drive. But as you can see here, that they also make it for right-hand drive. So I'm gonna go ahead and put this and the stock one next to each other, and we'll go ahead and see what we need to install it in the car. Here we have the easy power steering column and your stock power steering column. Uh, if you wanna see how to remove your stock column, click the link right here to my uh, disassembly video of the E30 interior and uh, how to take that out will be in it. When you unbox the easy power steering, obviously it's missing a few things like the uh, collar up here that holds your ignition lock you're also missing the clamp that mounts to the firewall as well as the uh, actual clamp that mounts it to the column. And lastly, you're gonna need uh, the lower mount uh, on this that attaches it to right underneath the dash. So um, we're gonna go ahead and transfer it to the table and we're gonna go ahead and knock this out and take that part off and get it transferred over to uh, easy power steering column. I'm gonna, since it's on the note here, you wanna make sure that you do not hammer anything onto, oh, not focused, there we go. You do not wanna hit the input shaft on either side as it can mess up the calibration of the unit. So make sure when you're putting stuff on that you're nice and easy with it and you won't have any problems. So let's go over the bench, and get the OEM one disassembled and we can go ahead and get the new one back in the car. All right, so let's go ahead and take this apart. Super simple, I already got this piece off. This just is cupped up here, pull it off. You'll end up using, reusing this. You can still buy this and this new, uh, but they are quite expensive. Uh, we are gonna be replacing the gasket. You can no longer buy the gasket, um, so I'll be buying some other material um, similar and adding that to the firewall. So these are breakaway bolts. So once they, if you buy them new, they come with a little head that once they get to a certain torque, uh, they snap clean off and they're almost impossible to get off. So what you have to do is weld a nut to them and then they will unscrew. Luckily I had another uh, steering column that had already replaced the, the height adjustment. So all I had to do is weld a nut to the sides and get those out. But when you weld the nut to the sides, uh, it gets rid of these plastic guides, so you'll need to buy them new. But try to save the dowels uh, that go on the inside. These are NLA and you cannot get them anymore. So um, when I welded these and these got uh, burned off, these were left over. So go ahead, sand them down, make sure they're nice and clean and then stick them back in here. And now for taking off the front section, and then from the front here, obviously you have your nut. Go ahead and take that off. You have your washer. Um, some E30s will have a steering wheel spacer. And then if you look in here, there is a locking ring, just like the one on a selector joint, if you've ever done that job before. So we're gonna need to pry that off, which will get the washer and the spring out. We were able to get it off, so what I did was I went underneath it just to get it out of the groove and then just went around 
and just kind of pulled itself out. Uh, easier said than done because that sucked. Um, now we just got to get it past these as well. There we go. All that for this little clip. So there's your spring, and then you have two washers. And then obviously that holds this center section in, and then it gets all the way in the back. You have that. You want to be careful not to break this. So what I'm actually going to do is drill the two rivets out, and I'll re-rivet uh, it later, or just put a, a nut and washer. Uh, but these are getting harder and harder to find, which is your horn contact. There is another breakaway bolt right here. Go ahead and take a uh, Dremel or an angle grinder and cut a slit into it. And with a screwdriver, you should be able to take that one out. Make sure you're wearing eye, ear, and face protection when you're cutting. That's what that looks like. And then that slides right off. Uh, so once the pin is out, and the, the clip is out, this will just come off and we could put it onto the new one. For reinstallation, go ahead and take the nut off. I went through and made sure everything was clean. I'm not replacing the bearing that's in there, but I did pack it with a little bit of grease, just some uh, red and tacky, and spun it around, make sure it was nice and clear. So what we'll do is go ahead and slide this on. I'm going to flip the unit over so that we can see, you can see where the, so you can see where the divot is. So we'll just go back and then all we'll do is we'll just simply reinstall the pin that we took out with the screwdriver. I'm going to add a little bit of blue Loctite, just a tiny bit. We'll go ahead and... Now we'll go ahead and get the clip, the spring, and the two washers installed, and then this fun clip right here. So we'll get the ring on first, slide that in, add our spring. The two. According to Real OEM, there's only uh, one washer but the way it sits, um, and there's just like some extra play in here, I'm gonna double up the washer so that it's nice and firm against the clip ring. All right, once the locking ring's on, you can go ahead and put the steering wheel spacer, which I made the mistake of kind of opening it up a little bit. Uh, so once you put the steering wheel spacer on, it has um, grooves inside, so it should seat, it'll seat flush. And if it doesn't, just uh, once the wheel's bolted on, it'll it'll pinch itself uh, together. So uh, don't worry too much uh, if it doesn't seat perfectly right now. So just for now, I'm gonna put the old, uh, old washer and the old locking nut on. So that's all finished up. Let's go ahead and flip it around. As you can see here, there's another groove, which means there's parts on the old one. As you can see, we have another spacer. We have actually two spacers, one large, one small. So go ahead, take these off and transfer them to the new one, get them all cleaned up. It looks like they're still available new. Uh, so it's up to you. All right, so I got them cleaned up. They cleaned up nicely. Um, go ahead and put them on, just stack them together, put them on. Luckily, this clip was only like a half, so it should be a lot easier to put back on. So I don't need to. All right, there we go. All right, now that everything's done on the bottom of the steering column, let's go ahead and get, go ahead and get the bracket installed. I am gonna send it off to get powder coated, but for now, it'll do just fine. So the ones that will get the spacers 
I got a little longer and the ones without the spacers, I got a little shorter. So go ahead and slap that in here. I'm gonna put a, uh, a washer and a, a lock washer uh, when I do the final install. And then I will also add blue Loctite uh, to both the, the bolts. Now for the ones that go on the sides, go ahead and get your, your washers and your dowels. And go ahead and clean these up real quick. And then we'll throw them in. Go ahead and press the dowels into the spacers. You will have to use a hammer to cap them in. Just like that. And then go ahead and take your bolt and thread it in. I'm gonna put a washer on this side and then lock it in. I'm gonna do the other side and then we'll go ahead and get the cup and the lower mount on the column and then we'll get it installed in the car. So go ahead and get the cup on. I'll put the lip facing up. So start with that, slide that on. And then make sure this is still loose. And then obviously you'll have your new gasket on here. Let's go ahead, slide it through and on to this. And we'll go ahead and tighten it down later. But now we're ready to install into the car. All right, let's get it slid into place here. So you'll do your two 13s at the bottom. So we'll just place it through and let it sit. And we'll come up with it. And then you'll put it Make sure that the bushings are centered in here. All right, got it in. When you're installing it, go ahead and loosen the two caps on the edges as well as the control box. Um, as when you when you when you push it up, it kind of hits. Um, you just got to pull the control box a little little out. It'll slide in. Loosen it. Pull it off to the side and everything will slide in nicely. And then you can go ahead, slide it back in and attach the green connector and it sits nice and flush in there. So there we go, columns installed. Obviously there's no wiring in here. So with the magic of editing. Well, that was cheesy, but uh, there's all the wiring back in the car. Obviously this is not, uh, I didn't install a torn seat and, and bad carpet in my car. It is back there. This is a car I bought off my buddy for a, and I could use as a tester. If you haven't seen that video, you can go check it out right there. But the steering column is back in. A few things to add when installing is you will want to take off this cover right here off your AC unit and then you can go ahead and reattach it after. You're going to want to drop the ABS module and you are still going to want to take off the box off the side of this just to make the install a lot easier. Uh, but once you have all that in, we can now go ahead and start wiring it in. Also, before you start everything, make sure you unplug your battery and turn the key a few times, make sure there's no power in the system, and then you can go ahead and get started. Going back to the beginning of the video, we can see they do ins include a nice pictured, colored and pictured uh, instruction guide and install is pretty easy when it comes to the wiring. You gotta find the main branch and then we will install this wire to it, which is a plus 15, this little one right here into the green. So on this US car, they're sewing, it's just a green wire right there. It is these wires right here. There is a solid green and then there's a green and, uh, let's see, what is that? Like a green and off white that run to your ignition switch. So we're gonna go ahead and tap, not the ignition switch side, but the far side. I will cut this. One side will go to a butt connector. What? Well, it'll, it'll become butt connector. Or if you have a tap, you can use a tap. But I'll use a butt connector, and we'll go. One side will have one, and then the other side will have both of the wires going to them. As you can see here, we got the green wire coming out after after the switch because that's power. 
that goes to it. Once you turn the key, then it should give power to this and then go through. So we have power coming out and power going through. Then we will feed this main wire, which comes off of this fuse right here. This will go straight to the battery. I'll probably run that across and up to the front. There is this, uh, this long one that they include. You do have to crimp yourself. So go ahead and grab yourself some uh, wire strippers and then we'll go ahead and crimp this on there and put the heat shrink on and that will connect to that right there. And then on the other side with the ring terminal, do the same thing on the other like that and like that and you're ready to go. Wait to put the ring terminal on till after you've pushed the wire through. It'll make life a million times easier. Very easy and straightforward. One on one end, one on the other. Make sure there is no bare wires exposed and ready for install. I know this is all a mess, so bear with me. I went ahead and the control box is mounted. It's loose, not tight. Went ahead and put the plug in the back. Uh, run it under. So all I have to do is remove the under panel for the power cable. We can go ahead and pop it through the boot right here for the engine harness. And then if you have your battery up front, you can go ahead and attach it to your battery. I will attach it to the distribution block right there. Uh, come probably right out that little hole right there and up and touch the power. Got it installed. Don't put it on that one. That's the recharge system. That's for recharging your battery. Go ahead and do the one off the main power. So I did that one right there. It's an eight. And then we also have a ground that needs to be installed, which will go. Let's go ahead and get that ground taken off. It is a 10 mil all the way back there. Slip the ring on and then tighten it down. Again, it's a terrible angle, but you could see there's two bolt holes there so go ahead and put the ground onto one of them I recommend uh, having a nice distribution between not putting everything on one so there's two spots choose one that is the has less wires going towards it and you'll be good to go everything is cleaned up mostly uh, for underneath went and installed everything obviously I will be putting a dash back in uh, when it comes to testing the Motor does get in a little bit of the way of the ABS unit here. So for right now, I just have it zip tied. But for when I close out the video, there still shouldn't be any issues with the dash sitting there. Uh, that that should This should be fine because it'll just sneak right there and hold it up in place. The key in the first position, no power on to turn the wheel. It's turning, but it's it's got a good amount of force that needs to be done in it. So let's turn the key on. Oh, it's like, I mean, there is a complete difference. And then obviously I can, so this is, I guess it's on its max right now. Wow. Woo. It's just like if there was Turn it, oh, turn it back off again, and it's hard again. That is very cool. Ooh. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and button everything up, put a dash on, and then let's go for a drive. So right now it is turned all the way off. So this is stock E30 rack, back and forth. You really do need to put a lot of effort into it. To turn it and then we'll turn it all the way on and it is considerably easier to turn as if there was power steering turn it off again
back on. Easy. Let's go for a drive, see how this goes. factory rack is already super numb when it comes to driving especially with power steering but it, it is so much heavier so you don't have to really tug on the wheel when you're driving. Let's turn it all the way off again. Heavy it is with, with nothing on it. And especially if you're running, like I'm running 17s on my other car. So it's definitely, it's a lot more tired. Back inside the shop super hot outside so i'd rather get this done inside but uh overall i mean it, there's definitely a huge difference between not having it and having it i would say it's even lighter than having power steering um, and again this was just a quick drive if you haven't seen my rack swap video i bought a bunch of different uh, racks that i'm gonna go ahead and test every single one of them a lot of stuff on forums is based on opinion on why one rack is better than the others, but there really isn't one that is better than the other. It is more of what is best for your driving style. So I wanna go through and test them so that I can give a good um, explanation on how each rack feels driving. I Maybe I'll just link the playlist. I'll link the playlist right here but there'll be a power steering, regular power steering, and a non-power steering video up before this. This video will come out, and then I will then have all of the racks tested with the electric power steering, so that will be in its own video, not in this one. So stay tuned for that. If you want to purchase the kit, rageitparts.com, and that's going to be it for today's video. So thank you guys for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe. If you have any questions, put them down in the comments below. If you don't follow me on Instagram, at the mass driver. If you guys need any BMW parts, hit up my parts page at Rage of Parts or RageofParts.com. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Thank you guys for watching. Have a great day.